Hey everyone, two years ago we purchased this Aero Garden Bounty Elite. I've just done a complete clean out and renovation after running it with tomato plants for like two years. Very successful, replacing it with these mighty mini cherry tomatoes. And I have no complaints about this particular model. It runs very well, except for one thing about all this is its price. They're very proud of this, spent a lot of money on marketing, looking at $395 for this unit. Wanting to experiment with other types of plants, we decided to go another route. And this is like a generic knockoff on Amazon. This is an Aflat 15 pod system. So do your wish.com competitor to the bounty harvest. So let's unpack this thing and see how well it works for what is a slightly bigger system for a quarter of the price. So there's the main unit, telescopic lamp assembly, a bag of these support sticks, blank caps, frames and covers for pods, empty peat pods, liquid fertilizer, and a power connector. I'll roll down the specifications right quick as shown on the side of the box, as well as the contents listed. And of course, it's made in China. Interestingly, they actually put the steps for the quick setup on the side of the box. So yeah, I, I think that's pretty nice. The pump and filter assembly came pre-installed in the main unit. Another feature is that this does hold 5.5 liters of water. I don't know the volume of the Aero Garden, but it's only a nine pod system. Aside from what's on the box, there's also an instruction manual provided with the unit. Within it includes the same exact information posted on the side of the box. Our first step will be the assembly of the telescopic lamp and power. Peeling off the plastic is the best part of the whole project. I'll point out that these lights are 35 watts as compared to the Aero Garden's 50. All of the items came well packed and were easily identifiable. One quick gotcha here, this sticker that says remove, they don't mean the sticker, they mean the foam too. This foam is, is not a gasket, that's actually part of the insulation. So this whole thing gets removed. The arrows line up and the piece snaps in. The power cord plugs into the receptacle indicating power. And then the line for the pump plugs into the receptacle indicating pump. Another piece of insulation up top is removed and the entire lamp fixture snaps down into place. This lamp is telescoping 30.3 inches as compared to the Aero Garden's 24. There's a recess in the tank that I then push the cable for the pump into, and then do a quick power test. As I apply power, immediately we're gonna get an alarm because there's no water in it, so it's gonna trigger uh, the low water alarm as we could see here flashing with what looks like the food alarm too. So this is just to make sure everything works. Going to shut that off now. I'm back 10 days later and I'm showing the Aero Garden because we had a power outage and I'm setting the clock on this Aero Garden that's connected to the internet. More on this later. So here's how the top cover would simply seat into the unit. No problem at all. And as I would mentioned before, this is a 15 pod unit as compared to the Aero Garden's 9. Now the Aero Garden has an air of wah which keeps the water level maintained if you're out a couple of days and it connects to a hole that's designed for this unit in the back. This unit does not have, so what we're gonna do is take one of these holes and we're gonna bore it out and accommodate it. And we're just using a 13 64th bit to chase one of these existing holes in the plastic to make it big enough to fit the tube in. And that should do it. We check our fitment and everything looks good. We're not using any of the seed pods or fertilizer provided by the kit. Everything's from Aero Garden. The goal was only to replace the unit itself. Our first group is a custom salad kit that came from Aero Garden, and there are several that were picked out. It also comes with the covers as well as fertilizer. I like these salads in a group yeah. on the left hand side. So there are six of those. And then on the right, we can separate the bell peppers and the eggplants. That way they won't get all tangled up in the salad growth. Very good. That's what we'll do. The holes on these are slightly larger, so the pods fall all the way in almost flush. On the Aero Garden, I stick out slightly to attach the cover while they're already in. A strategy is then worked out to get all the pods in an optimal position. Having never grown these before, a lot of this is guesswork as to where we're going to situate this stuff. The middle pod was left empty on the left-hand side. These caps from Aero Garden are quite terrible. They don't always lock on. Some of them you have to put on and then like chew them to bend them on. But this is Aero Garden related and not to this device. The bell pepper one from Aero Garden also came with these blank caps. I'd completely forgotten that the device that we're using also had blank caps. 
So the bell peppers ended up going here. And now I'm placing the air garden caps over the blanks, and I think they fit, like, kind of okay. But the ones that came from this company probably would have fit better. I had just completely forgotten that I had them. And our last will be these two fairy tale eggplants, which I ended up putting right here, and then there's a final hole where we put a blank cap. The next step will be water. And they recommend, like, distilled water or low mineral water. I have zero water, we can see in this picture, so... That's good enough for me. And we got it now up to the fill line. Applying power. There's no alarms now because the water's filled. And we can see right with no configuration, it's right on day zero, vegetable and herbs, 25 degrees centigrade. And that's what we're looking at. And there's no display for date time. Again, I reiterate that from earlier. Something you have to configure on the era garden when you first turn it on, or when you lose power. I'm using the fertilizer from Aragarden, so I'm measuring based on the number of pods in the unit. And this comes out to two and like a third of a cap of fertilizer. So I'm just putting that in the water now. Software installation begins by searching for the Smart Life app on the App Store. And we can see it here, it's a little house with a little Wi-Fi thing coming out the side in blue. So I hit get. And after waiting a while, it installs, so I open it up. User agreement, privacy policy, agree, and now I'm going to have to create a new account. So I'm going to register with an email address. Once I log in, it will need permission to find devices on the local network. So I hold in this button until this long line starts blinking that has no correlation to the button, but it's LCD, so they don't have like a custom widget on here to tell you that you're ready to connect. And I hit allow on Bluetooth, and we can see our device appear. So I hit add, and now I'm going to say permission for the Wi-Fi, I'm going to need to set that up. And it wants to use my location. I believe this is primarily for network time protocol, so I'll hit allow once, and I'll supply my Wi-Fi information, and the device is now being added, so I'll wait a bit. And eventually I get a success notification. Pressing done, our device loads up for observation. And we could see that it's set on the plant days of zero with the current date. And that current date is important because the date time is automatically set off the network and there's the on and off for our light, something that the error garden does not do. I've paused here from the instructions so all of the options can be seen in the application. So theoretically, if there's a power outage that this reconnects to the network, it'll reestablish the current date and time. The error garden, you have to manually set the date and time. So we're now running on day zero, everything is set up and we're ready to go and observe how everything's gonna function in our new system. Just a quick glance here at two days in, 27 degrees centigrade, and we can see that some of the containers have some moisture accumulating on the top, which is uh, always a good sign that we see in the error gardens. And I've installed an extra UPS unit onto both of these systems. I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna apply power to this after I've unplugged it. And even though it sets the time, the plant days get set back to zero, even though it's on the network. The, the program does not remember what plant day was on, so that needs to be manually set. And I'm just going to do this through the app. So this device is not capable of remembering what plant day it's on, and the error garden is not capable of remembering the time and date. So both of them need to be on some sort of battery backup to continue functioning properly. It's ludicrous. This could obviously be fixed in software, but I wouldn't hold my breath, so it looks like we're going to use the UPS unit. So how do you demonstrate success in something that takes so much time? We're uh, 19 days in, and we're experimenting with this one with stuff we've never grown before, like the kale and the bell peppers and the fairy tale eggplant. And we're seeing, you know, plants are coming up, and things are looking good. Some of them are taking longer than others. Some of them look like they're not coming up at all, but... When we experiment with new stuff, even with the error garden, it's hit and miss. I wish it didn't have to hit a button to keep this display on, though. Here we are now, day 26, and we can see some of them did not grow at all. Some of them are just starting to grow now at day 26. Make sure not to cut anything before this video is taken. But we have the bell peppers coming up, and the fairy tale eggplants coming up. So all of these on this side coming up, only uh, some issues on the lettuce side, but... It's funny because one of the lettuces, lettuces, lettuce A, whatever, just started blooming now. Only in the beginning, but things are looking good. We will have to deal with the sticks and the weight management as the ones on this side get taller. 
but obviously that's not something we're dealing with yet. But this kale right here is just exploding, as you see. Swiss shard, nothing happened on that one. Nothing on yet. Arugula and baby green just started right there just a couple days ago. Just, yeah, out of nowhere. So now full 31 days in, that baby green's starting to come up. We've already trimmed the kale and everything else is growing. Nothing else need be trimmed. That fairy tale eggplant is getting a lot taller. And I believe this experiment shows that you could have the function of the arrow garden harvest at a fraction of the price, giving up very little, if any, functionality or convenience. And that concludes our video on the replacement of the arrow garden with the cheap knockoff. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in the series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>